Hi everyone, and welcome to episode 151 of Saranova Crafts. I'm your host Jessica. I can be found as Saranova on Ravelry and Twitter, and as Saranova Crafts on Instagram. I'm going to do my best to do show notes because I have a few different projects to, to show to you, so I'm going to try to do my show notes. Um, if I get them out, <laughs> they'll be on my blog in the Ravelry group, group. Links down below if you're watching on YouTube. Also, if you're on YouTube, um, there's a link down below to join the Discord I made. There's really nobody there right now, but um, feel free to come in and say hi. I usually have Discord running on my phone, so feel free to say hello. Um, and if you are on Ravelry, then it should be, there's a link in the group description on Ravelry. So go to the Saranova Crafts podcast group. And in the description, there's links to like my Facebook, not my Facebook, um, my Twitter, my Instagram, and I put a link to the Discord. So with that said, I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, I've been busy this week. I haven't been mono crafting, which if I want to finish that sweater for Rhinebeck, I probably should be mono crafting, but you know, um, you know, I just need to get it going. So, um, for Rhinebeck, it's 14 days until Rhinebeck, um, or well, 14 days until open time on the Saturday of New York State Sheep and Wool. Um, so really 13 days for me to finish this sweater because I'm going to start off with the sweater. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I've put a good amount of stuff on it since last time. What is the... Oh, okay. They're using the scratching post. That's good. Um, so when I showed it to you guys... So here it is. So I put the marker in where I showed it to you guys last week. So I've put a good two and a half, three inches on, right? And I'm on the third set of shoulder increases. It's got like this, um, it's got interesting shoulder construction. You can see here, right, you have the increase line and then um, more increases. So, and then the back cable panel. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw that I had ripped back the center cable and redone it because I'd screwed up and I have successfully continued the cable without a further mishap. Um, it's starting to look kind of sweater-ish, like I could kind of like swing it around my shoulders and it's a little capelet right now. Kind of. The needle isn't quite long enough to get it out to where, you know, but it's getting there. Um, I definitely think it'll be, you know, I definitely think it'll, um, it'll fit because if, if the needle was longer, because this is a 40 inch uh, cable, if I had like this on like a 60, I could definitely stretch it out. Um, but it's definitely going to fit, especially because it's going to grow a little bit when I block it. Um, I did... Uh, I think I stayed with the needle size the pattern said, actually, which is a, I'm on a seven, and I'm just double checking what the, um, what the pattern says for, says a seven. So I stayed on a seven, um, mainly because even though normally I go up a, I tend to go up a size because, um, because I knit so tightly. Um, what I did instead was I went up a size in the sweater because this this yarn is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted Heather in the... This, what is this? Persimmon Heather? Persimmon Heather? Yes, Persimmon Heather. So that's what this is. Knit Picks. Oh, and there goes Confetti. Hi, Confetti. No? Okay, bye. Um, yeah, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted in Persimmon Heather. Um, this knits up a little thin for a worsted. It works up more like a DK. So I actually went up a size in the sweater to compensate and I stayed at the same needle size because once I block it, this is gonna, you know, it's gonna get a little thinner, the fabric. Um, but I don't want it to get too thin once I block it. I want it to still have some structure to it. So, um, so yeah, I kept the needle size, but I went up a sweater size instead. And I don't mind if the sweater's a little baggy. So if it ends up a little baggy, that's totally fine by me. Not gonna bother me. I don't mind baggy sweaters, especially when they button and they're cozy and have a nice big shawl collar on them. So, that is that. Um, I'm gonna show you guys my socks real quick because um, I don't remember if I showed them in the actual show or not last week. Yes, yes I did because I was trying to decide um, whether I was going to do Hermione's every day or just a plain vanilla sock and I decided because I wanted to be able to see the speckles in the yarn that I'm going to do just a plain vanilla sock. So this is just plain vanilla sock. This is 72 stitches on a US one. Um, I cast on 20. This isn't a pattern. I've just figured this out over the years. I cast on 20, increase every other row. Um, I do make one left and make one right increases for the toe so it's knit one. 
make so to work across one half of the needle it's knit one make one left knit to the last stitch make one right knit one and I do that on both sides so I have just a nice triangular toe because that fits my foot um and then when I get to the heel I'm going to do the fish lips kiss heel but um I'm just going to do straight vanilla socks and when I get to the heel I'll decide which side I like better for the top of the sock <laughs> um like if one has more like so see like this side has more color pops than this side I might like choose like this side for the top of the foot that I'm not walking on but anyways I forgot to put a um a, a progress keeper in on this but I was about here I'd done hadn't finished all the increases yet um so that is the socks and after I record today I'm going to put a progress keeper on those um so that um, so that I can, when I show you guys next week, you'll see where I was. So drop that down there. Get this. Yes, it's in my Star Trek bag. That's the big sweater. So, um, I might have started a project. I might have started two projects last night. So, here's the thing. It is now basically 5 p.m. on a Friday. I have been up since about 2.15 this morning. And not on purpose. With the weather yesterday, um, I ended up with a massive migraine. It started out as a sinus headache and transitioned into a migraine, like pounding back here and all the way up into my skull, like into my temples and behind my forehead and massive, massive migraine. I took something, but I, I only have over the counter stuff. I don't have like a prescription for migraine meds because um, I've never been like diagnosed as having bad enough headaches. So I only get them really a few times a year this bad. Um, so I just take like over the counter like Excedrin migraine, right? So I took Excedrin migraine when I got home from work yesterday and then I couldn't take more before I went to bed. I went to bed, I woke up at like 2, 2.15 in the morning. My head was splitting, like the pain woke me up. That's how bad my headache was. Came out, I took two more Excedrin migraine because it says two pills every like six, eight, six hours or something like that. And because of the caffeine in the Excedrin migraine, I couldn't get back to sleep. So I'm like, okay, I might as well sit in it. So I put some work on the sweater. Um, I didn't work on the sock, but then I'm like, I want to start something because I had starteritis this morning. So I started something and then I promptly pulled it out. And then I wound up more yarn when I got home from work today to do it because I changed my mind on what colors I wanted to do. Now, I left the pattern over on the couch because I'm on the love sack and the couch is like four feet that way. So I'm not going to go get the pattern, but I am, however, going to pull it up on Ravelry and show it to you. Why? Um, so I started the Shoe Sweet Shrug, or well, I'm going to start because I ripped out what I started because I didn't like the colors and I'm going to restart it. Um, but it is uh, by, um, it's the, sh I'm trying to get my phone to cooperate here, please. Okay, thank you. It's by Suzanne Summer. Um, it's called the, of course I need to unplug it. It's called the Shoe Sweet Shrug. And, um. That's what it looks like. So it's got, um, you know, you can. It's got brioche, and it's kind of like a shrug. It's kind of like a sweater. I like the idea of it. That's a really good view. Um, so it has sleeves. It's basically like a shawl with sleeves, which I'm like, sign me up. So um, you can see there that that's how like it sits. It's a giant triangle thing. That's a good view, right? So you can see here. That's what it looks like. So it's, but um, it's got garter stitch and brioche. So the colors I had picked this morning, which if you saw my Instagram, you saw the colors. They were a light blue and a dark brown. After knitting about six rows, I was like, mm -mm. I out it came, out it came. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I um, consulted some friends, both my like podcasting ladies and um, another friend who is really good with color. And this is what I came up with for this. So this is going to be the main color and this is going to be the contrast color. So this is Honey Girl Farms um, on her deluxe sock base. Um, I got two skeins of it. So this is actually two skeins caked together. Both of these are two skeins caked together. I love my ball winder. My ball winder can skein up like 20 ounces of yarn at a time. So like when I had the two skeins, I just connected the two skeins and just kept winding and it just worked out so well. So these are two, each of these. So I'm holding four skeins of yarn right here. Okay, so anyways, this yarn, this speckled gorgeousness here, which this I got at Stitches United when I went down. 
Um, this I got, so that was back in the spring. So this is Honey Girl Farms. They're from Emma was Missouri, right? I think Emma was Missouri. So it's Honey Girl Farms. They were very sweet. And it is a very nerdy, <laughs> very nerdy um, colorway name. I'm just going to say Tenant was the best. So, <laughs> uh, so it's the 10th Doctor from their Doctor Who collection. It's their Luxe Sock. It's 85% Superwash Merino, 15% Nylon, and it's 100 yards to 430, 100 grams to 437 yards if I can speak. Um, because for the pattern, you need almost 900 yards of color A and about just shy of 800 yards of color B. Color A, color B. So, because these skeins were like 440, so that gives me um, 8. 80, which is enough. And then this skein, these are 400 yard skeins, so I have 800 of this, which is enough for what? And this one is 100 Ravens, <laughs> Iacos, in their Dragon Heartstring colorway. Um, this is 100% Superwash Merino, so I'm doing a, a, a Merino nylon with a Merino, but since I'm gonna be wearing it, I figured that'll be fine, um, since I'm not making socks out of any of this yarn. Um, I wouldn't make socks out of the Iacos anyways, because it's not a true sock yarn. It's a two-ply merino. Um, but anyways, um, they're actually about the same thickness, like the, the strands. So I'm not too worried about that. So it should work out really well. Um, but so yeah, so I'm going to get that cast on. So that was the color combo I came up with. Those are both pulled from Stash. The, the 100 Ravens color is no longer available, I believe. Don't hold me to that. They might have added it to their permanent collection but um I don't think so because last year for um for 2017 because each year they do like a, a collection theme last year was like dragons and this year is um like mixology so like they have colorways based on so like they had like a um like a night fury colorway and they had like a fairy dragon and they had actually you're gonna see the fairy dragon because I have some in my bag I'm gonna pull out for the next project but anyways um they do like yearly collections and this one was from um from their 2017 so i don't think they're keeping it anymore but i fell in love with the dragon heartstring when i saw it i mean it's just this gorgeous burgundy with like dark purples and brighter shots of red not much red but just every once in a while you get a brighter you, you know get a brighter bit of it and it's just oh it's so pretty and i was trying to decide what to do with it and i'm just like i want to do it in something that would show it off and i think this pattern would show it off so um, so I'm doing a speckled with a semi-solid. So that should be good. And then the other thing I cast on this morning, so I have two more projects to show you. The other thing I cast on this morning, again, I don't have the pattern physically anywhere near me, so I'm going to have to show it to you on my phone as soon as I get myself untangled. Because so I threw stuff in a bag all together without actually um, putting any of the projects in separate project bags. So projects are tangled to other projects. I was bad, I know. But look, isn't it a cute bag? Isn't it cute? I mean, look at all the woodland creatures. Two bucks at Joann's. <laughs> but um, I like reusable bags, and this one was really cute with like the wintery, folly animals, and I'm just like, okay, sign me up. <laughs> For two dollars, it's worth it, right? Um, okay, so this next pattern that I also started this morning, this one is called Spitfire. Um, I will pull it up on my phone in just a sec as soon as I finish winding the yarn back onto the balls. Yeah, so by the way, I hand wound these this morning because my ball winder is really noisy and I would have woken Kevin up. But <clears throat> as soon as I was the only one home, I totally used my ball winder for the other skeins because hand winding takes a lot of energy. And I was doing it, at, you know, when it was, um, what am I saying? I don't even know what I'm saying. I was doing it when it was like really early this morning and my ball winder makes a devil of a noise um, because I don't have, so my ball winder doesn't have plastic gears, it has metal gears. So it makes a lot of noise. It really does. It makes a lot of noise. So I won't do it when anybody else is home or well, when Kevin is home because he's the only other person I live with. But yeah, I just I won't do it. So anyways, um, so this other project that I'm going to show you in a sec and that's my text message. Yes, mom, I know I need sunglasses tomorrow. My mom and I are going to the Topps Field Fair tomorrow. It's the oldest continuously running agricultural fair in the country. It's in Topps Field, Massachusetts. Um, and um, it's something we've been doing every year for years and years and years. Um, if you've been following the podcast, you know I go every year. Um, my mom has been going since she was born. I've been going since I was born. I can count on one hand the number of years I've missed in my life, and I'm trying to keep it that way. So... Anyways, 
This next project I cast on is called Spitfire, and it is by Carissa Browning. So there it is. As you can see, it's a two-color brioche scarf with this flame motif. This is a paid-for pattern. Um, the, the other one is a paid-for pattern, too. Um, this one is $5 on Ravelry, and I am using... 100 Ravens Iacos again, um, and doing it in Apollo, which is this golden yellow, and Fairy Dragon, which is this multicolor. So these are fun, right? These are super fun together. Um, and so here it is. So I've gotten, I got the first page of the pattern done. Like the first, like, page. I mean, obviously on the following pages is going to be repeats and stuff, but I got the first page of the pattern done. Um, and so um, it's called Spitfire, just one word, Spitfire. Um, yeah, it's a seven page pattern, but there's, but like, I finished the first page of actual instructions and then the second page of actual instructions, you got to repeat that like eight times. So it's going to take me a while to, to work on it after this. But anyways, so this is the right side or what the right side, because with brioche, it's, it's reversible. But anyways, this is the right side. So you can see the yellow is more prominent and once it blocks, it'll look a lot better. And then this is the wrong side where the fairy dragon is more prominent. So you could totally, like, um, you know, pick a side. Like, if you'd like this side better, then you do that side. If you'd like this side better, do that side. But they're super cool together. I know this is not everyone's color combination. Like, I am well aware some people are going to be going, ugh, with the colors. But I thought it was cool. I got these skeins when I was at DFW back in April from Becca um, as, like, you know, Part of my payment for helping run the booth for the weekend is part of my, you know, pay for the being booth monkey. Um, because we'd seen people put together some really cool combinations for this. Like, like emerald green and then like parrot colors or like black and like, you know, a really crazy jewel toned multicolor thing. You know, we saw some really, really cool color combos go together. Um, and I picked this one and I am not regretting it in the least. I'm very happy about this. So I'm going to be working on getting this um, together. And I will put a progress keeper in this as soon as I'm done recording. So, and lastly, I finally picked up my design project, project again. Um, I put a little bit on it since you guys last saw it. I've been knitting on other things, but I want to get this done for Saf, um, which is the semi-annual fiber fest or something like that. I, forget, I honestly forget what SAF stands for and I'm terribly sorry, but I'm going to be going there in three weeks. Like, so right back in two weeks, SAF in three weeks. Um, so I want to have this finished to show off. So these are the, so that's how it's going. Um, as you can see, the eyelet sections are getting wider. I'm working on an eyelet section now, so it isn't wider yet, but I'm getting there. Should be fun. This is in a worsted weight, so um, I am excited. So, uh, yeah, so that's that. And I did put a progress keeper in this one after the last time I showed it to you guys. So that's how much I've done since the last time you saw it, which was ages and ages and ages ago because I missed, like, a month and a half of podcasting. <laughs> but I didn't touch it, so, like, eh. Um, but anyways, I think that is everything. So thank you for watching if you've sat through all of my ramblings today. I really appreciate it. Um, if you were expecting pictures in last week's episode, I'm sorry. I forgot when I was editing to put them in. And then after I'd edited it, I didn't want to re-edit it. So I just left it and I put an apology in the show notes. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to insert anything in this one. I'm basically just going to throw it up straight with just my intro and my outro. Um, so thank you all for watching. Um, likes, subscribes, comments are all appreciated on YouTube. Um, you don't have to. It would just be nice, but uh, don't feel obligated. I'm not begging you for it. It's just nice to talk to people once in a while. Feel free to send me a message on Ravelry or on Twitter or whatever. You know, feel free to feel free to private message me wherever. Um, just to say hi or if you have any questions, um, feel free to hit me up. Feel free to join the Ravelry group. Check out projects I'm working on. Check out projects I've finished um, and all that jazz. So once again, you know, feel free to follow me on social media. Join the Discord. Subscribe to me on YouTube. Any of it, none of it, all of it. It's all appreciated. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!